Okay, good morning, everyone, and Hazak Baruch. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Thursday morning, Perashat Mitzorah. As we study our Perashat, my friends, and our Perashat, again, um, we, we, we have to split it with Pesach, it's coming up, uh, but we still have to study a little bit of the Perashat, and as we are especially trying to do this year, the Ora Haim HaKadosh, Rav Haim Ben Atar really has amazing Chidushim on the Perashat, <clears throat> novel ideas, and um, I think by now you're already getting a flavor of the Ora Haim HaKadosh, as we are uh, already midway through the Torah. Um, and he's really, uh, he has so much uh, insight, a lot of Kabbalah flavor sprinkled into his commentary. And it's beautiful to be able to study the Perasha uh, with different commentaries every year. So anyways, the Ora Haim HaKadosh, Perasha Mesora, and this is something that I'm sure you know by now, he loves giving, in general, uh, Remazim, Remez, uh, allusion. How he takes a paragraph and he says, by the way, that paragraph... Not only does it mean that on a simple level, but it's alluding to this. And now he shares a much deeper uh, layer than what the text is simp- uh, teaching us on a simple, straightforward level. So today I want to share with you a remez of the Ora Hayim. Again, this is textbook uh, for him. This is Perashah uh, Metzorah, of course. We have to first read the Psukim on a straightforward level. What is it simply saying? And then we'll go back and we'll see the depth. So open up to chapter 14. Right in the beginning of our parasha, the pasuk says, "Vaydaber Adonai el Moshe lemor." God says to Moshe, "Vezot tihiye Torah ta'mesora." The following should be the procedure of the uh, leper, someone afflicted with a tzaraat, beyom tahorato, on the day that he gets pure. Vehubala kohen, he should come to the kohen. Now again, I'm I'm already warning you that we're going to go today into the remez. So for remez, you need to know the pshat and every word of the simple, straightforward text matters because every, every word here is going to allude to something there. So pay attention to the words and if you could open up a homash, even better. So this should be the procedure. He should be brought to the Kohen. Now the Kohen will go out of the camp because we don't bring the, don't bring the Tameh into the camp. Can't be, can't be here. So actually the Kohen has to go out to him. And the Kohen looks and he sees that the leper is healed. Vetziva kohen. So he then commands. Velakah la mitaher shtetze porim hayot eorot. The leper now takes two birds. Etz eres. A cedar tree. Uh, not the whole tree. That's a little bit heavy. But uh, some, some part of the tree. Ushni tolat. Crimson thread. Okay. That's a type of animal. Ve'ezov. Okay. Uh, it's a worm, right? I think it's a worm. So, so it's a thread made from the color from the worm. The ezov and hisap. Okay? So he's going to take two birds and these three ingredients. The tree, the wor- crimson thread, and the hisap. Vetziva kohen. Veshahat et asipor ha'ehat. Now the kohen will order to slaughter one bird. El keli heres al ma'im ha'im. Slaughter it into a earthenware vessel. That has in it water. It has a haya in a second bird that's still alive. Yikahota, take it. It 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 is with the, along with the cedar tree, along with the hyssop, along right with the uh, with the crimson thread. Vetavalotam, dip all of those together, the bird and those other three things. Vetasipora haya, they dip it all in the blood. Bedam hatsipora sheuta. Dip it in the blood of the dead bird, which also has water. Though, remember the water that was in the silver earthenware vessel? Vehiza. And then sprinkle on the leper. That's now pure. That's now clean. Seven times. Sheva pe'amim. Vetiharo, and he'll be pure. Veshelah tzipor ha'haya al penasadeh. And send off the bird to the field. Vechibesa metahered begadav. The leper now, who's clean, cleanses his clothing. He shaves all of his hair. Rahat ba'mayim, and he, uh, you know, takes a, uh, he goes, he cleanses himself in the mikveh. Betaher, ve'ahari avol ma'ane, and then he can enter the camp. Ve'yashav mihutz la'halosh shavati mimin. He has to wait though one, one more, seven more days, one more week. Ve'ayam bayom shavii, and on the seventh day, he galachet kol se'aro again. He has to shave. It's a kano, it's gabot enav, every part of his body. Ve'chibes begadav again, wash. Okay, beautiful. So this is the procedure how a leper 
the stages of the purification of the Metzora. Again, I use the word leper, although it's probably not accurate because it's not the same as leprosy. Um, we said already last week, leprosy is a physical condition. Uh, this is more spiritual. This is not contagious on a physical level. So it's different. But either way, either way, everyone got the text? <clears throat> you got what it's simply saying? Because if you know that, now we can go deeper, one layer deeper today, into the remez. We know the Torah has pshat, remez, drash, sod, simple, and then alluding, and then the homiletics, and then the secrets. So today we're going to go into allusion. What is it alluding to? The, this story. It's also hinting to something deeper. And it's interesting, I want you to stop and you know, think about what could it be alluding to. <clears throat> it's amazing how these rabbis really had the whole Torah at their fingertips. And they were able to bring it all together um, in ideas like this. And we are blessed to be able to study from their words and to drink um, from their fountains. So, <clears throat> so here we go. I'm reading to you <clears throat> from the Ora Hayim. Ubederich Remez, he says, on the uh, approach of Remez. Termoza Perashal Galut Israel, the entire paragraph could allude to the exile of the Jewish people. Al Derech Omram Besefer Zohar. Way as follows. The Zohar writes, Ki umota olam li Israel him behinat tsara'at. Wow. The Zohar writes that the nations of the world are to the Jews like tsara'at is to a person. That means <clears throat> the oppression of the, of the Jewish people by idolatrous nations had the character of the various forms of tsara'at. Okay? So the Pasuk is talking about someone that has tsara'at. That's, that's us. The Jewish people, we are the ones afflicted. And who is afflicting us? The Tzara'at, the nations of the world. And the idolatrous nations dominate us. For the very same reason that causes Tzara'at. Why does Tzara'at come to a person? Because of gossip. For that very same reason, we are in Galut. We are in exile. Remember that Moshe Rabbeinu, when he saw the Jews um, were fighting with each other. Remember? He said, to, he, his first day out of the palace, he saw the Egyptian striking the Jew. So he saved the Jew's life and he killed the Egyptian. But the next day, the next day, he saw the two Jews fighting. When he tried to break it up, one of the Jews said to him, Oh, are you going to kill me like, uh, like you killed the Egyptian yesterday? You know, I'm going to tell on you, Moshe. And then Moshe responds, Achen noda davar. And on a simple level, that means, Ah, oh, I see that now it became known. I see that now people found out what I did yesterday when I killed the Egyptian. Noda davar. But this is, that's the pshat. But look over here, Rashi writes. Rashi writes over here, Achen noda davar, midrasho, on a deeper level, Moshe says, now I understand what's been bothering me all of, these, all of this time. What did the Jews do that we are being punished more than any other nation? You know, I think this is a question that not only did Moshe have in Egypt, it's a question that till today the Jews have. What are we, why are we the ones getting picked on? What did we do to deserve this? Well, you know, any other nation that defends themselves, God bless them. The Jews try to defend themselves. We're uh, aggressors. We're uh, in, you know, we're uh, we're killing innocent people. We don't care about lives of civil, right? Any other nation? Why? Why us, Hashem? What do we do? What did we do to deserve this? You know, give us a break already. Every other nation, they get away with it. Aval uh, ani. But then Moshe said, "Now I understand." Achen or the Now it all makes sense. I see shehem reuim lekach because they are speaking gossip. About each other. So, um, so Moshe Rabbeinu is clearly understanding that the reason of Galut is because of, you know, gossiping, whistling, right? Um, uh, squealing. So, all of these things, all of these things lead to Galut. And now it's very clear why we're comparing the Jewish people to a leper. Because if gossip put us into Galut, then also a leper... He gets, he gets leprosy because of his gossip. So it's the same cause, right? So the Pasuk here, when it talks about a leper, it's alluding really to the Jewish people. And it's alluding to the fact that we are being 
oppressed by the nations of the world. And the reason we're being oppressed is because of our gossip. Now, <clears throat> Tim Tsai, he brings another proof that gossip was the cause of exile. The Midrash says that a year later when we left Egypt, um, not a year later, sorry, Moshe, right? Many, many years later when we left Egypt, um, he, he, the Pasuk says that we only left because they did not have slanderers amongst them. The Jews, they learned their lesson. They calmed down. They stopped speaking about each other. You know, sometimes we like to tattletale on other Jews. Sometimes it could be to... To, to the government, to goyim, right? We like to gain, um, you know, uh, uh, kavod, strength. Uh, we want to get a good uh, reputation amongst our fellow Americans, our non-Jews. So we squeal on other Jews. We put down other Jews. We see, unfortunately, today, some, some of the biggest, uh, you know, anti-Semites are Jews themselves. Policies that are coming from Jews themselves against other Jews. The worst things that you could say about uh, Israel, about is right, are coming from Jews. It's very sad. But this is this is not a new problem. This is beginning from the beginning of time, and the only way we left Egypt was when that stopped. Then God saw, okay, there's no more lashon hara. Now we could take them out. So every one of us, we have to ask ourselves, how can we stop speaking gossip? What, what where's the gossip in my own life? But either way, coming back to Egypt, Hashem said, Hashem said. Now that you stopped, I could take you out. How did, how did God prove, how did we prove that we stopped speaking gossip? Because when God said to the Jews, I want you to each ask your neighbor for uh, her, her, you know, borrow from them clothing and vessels and gold and silver and money, right? The Jews knew this. And look at this. The knowledge of this matter that they're going to be taking the possessions of the Egyptians was with us for 12 months. From the time that Moshe told the Jewish people that we're going to leave Egypt until we actually left was 12 months. So for 12 months, the Jews knew that they're going to leave and they knew that when they're going to leave, they're going to take the clothing and the money and the possessions of the Egyptians. And yet, you do not find that anyone gossiped about his friend. Not one Jew told an Egyptian, by the way, be careful, your Jewish neighbor is going to rob you on the night of the Exodus. The Jews kept it a secret. They could have easily told their neighbor Egyptian, be careful, you know, watch over that Jew, he's going to try to steal from you, and it would be in a Jew's interest to maybe gossip, because now their Egyptian would treat them nicely. And yet we find that we didn't do that. Not one Jew squealed on his friend. And therefore, and therefore we see that the Jewish people um, have learned their lesson of gossip, that um, we, re we refrain from gossip, and that's what brought the redemption. Gam, furthermore, in the Adam min kono hara. Nothing distances a person more than gossip from God. So we know gossip is a very serious um, uh, gossip is a very serious sin. It removes the shekhinah. It removes the shekhinah. Anyone who speaks lashon hara, the Holy One, blessed he says of him, I and he cannot dwell in the world together. So it's a very serious sin. Something that we have to really try to improve and take seriously. And therefore, the Mitzorah, the Mitzorah, okay. <clears throat> yes, the Egyptians, good question. The Egyptians handed over the gold themselves. But for a year prior, the Jews knew that they're going to ask. And they still didn't squeal on each other to the Egyptians. That's the point. Okay. So now, our Pasuk, let's read it. Zot tiyeh torat ha Mitzorah beyom tahorato. Ah, this shall be the law of the Metzorah. Metzorah, again, is the Jewish people. It's alluding to us. And this will be what will happen to the Jewish people. Shehub am b'nei Israel, that we have been afflicted with the, with the leprosy, with the afflictions of the impure by, by the non-Jewish people. Beyom ta'orato, on the day of our purification. What does that mean? Sheyitaher leshono udrachav, when the Jewish nation will purify their tongue in its ways. When we abandon the sin of Lashon Hara. When we do that. Beyom Tahorato. On the day that we improve. On the day that we shape up. On the day that we fix our tongues. You know what's going to happen? Vehuvai la Kohen. At that time, we'll be brought to the Kohen. Who is the Kohen in the analogy? Hashem Baruch Hu Yitkaneh B'Shem Kohen. This is referring to God Almighty. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is titled Kohen, like it says in the Zohar, Behuvah Kohen, 
ve'amar ve'huva, and it said that we will be brought to the Kohen. Because of our sins, we distance from God. Now through our teshuvah, we will be brought closer to God. And immediately, When a Jew repents, immediately Hashem brings them very close. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. Teshuvah. Teshuvah, yesterday, the Rambam writes, yesterday the sinner was disgusted by God. Yesterday, the sinner, we're not talking about people that struggle with sin here and there. We're talking about a person that's really on purpose, doesn't care, right? We're talking about the worst sinner possible. Says, you know, God, I don't care about you. I don't care about anything. And he's living a life filled with just self-gratification. Yesterday, Rambam writes, this guy was very far from God. Teshuvah doesn't get closer than him. Teshuvah, it's like 180. You know, sometimes in a relationship, when we're in a fight with our spouse, So we make up, we make up, but there's still a buffer, right? It's not uh, the same. With God, opposite, when we do Teshuvah, we're as close as it gets, front row, okay? So the Pasuk is saying, Our deeds bring us back to Hashem. So, So the Mitzorah, the Jewish people, because of our leprosy, because of our gossip, Because of our Lashon Hara, the nations of the world are afflicting us. We received Tzara'at. But the day that we purify ourselves, the day that we stop, immediately we are back to being close to God. Wow, okay. That's the first Pasuk. Next Pasuk. Then the Kohen will go out of the camp. And he'll investigate. And what will happen on that day? that we do Teshuvah, then Hashem will go forth. What does that mean that He'll go forth? He will wage war with the nations of the world to conquer the nations that have oppressed the Jewish people. Wow. So Hashem will leave. He'll leave His camp. He'll leave the land of Israel, so to speak. And uh, God will go out into the rest of the world to wage war against everyone else. To the place of impurity. That's where the Jews are. This is called Kibbut Kaluyot. God's going to gather the Jews back into the Promised Land. Vera'ah Kohen, and then the Kohen will look and behold the Tzara'at has been healed. Sheba'adoba Tzara'at. That means that Hashem will see that the sin which brought the Tzara'at to begin with, i.e., gossip, shehazru betshuva benetharu, that we've repented. Okay, next pasuk. Vetziva Kohen, and then on that day that Hashem goes out to wage war. He will command to take two birds. Hmm. Pause. What do the two birds represent? Someone's going to get this one. I know it. On that day, on the day of redemption, on the day that we repent, when we get cleaned from our gossip, then Hashem will go out to wage war. And then on that day, we will have to bring two birds. What do the two birds represent? Give it another couple of seconds. Two birds, you ready? Him, Shenei, Meshihim. The two birds represent Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David. Hashem will appoint two birds to save the Jewish people. And Mashiach is called a bird. Because this is how the lofty souls are described as in the Zohar, as you know, he says, Kayadua. Ve'od matinu. Ve'od matinu she'yitkane ha'go'el latipor. We find that the Redeemer, the Mashiach, is described as a bird in Perashat Balak. It says over there, and I'll quote to you the Zohar. He quotes it for us. Umehahi me'arta. And from that cave, Yisge had ofar abreba. A great and superior bird will grow. De'ishlot be'alma. Ve'le'it yehiv malchuta. There will be a great bird which will come and dominate the world and he will be given royal authority. So the Zohar compares the Mashiach coming out of a cave to a bird. This is, the, this is why the Pasuk of here it says that the Kohen will take two birds and it's talking about two Mashiachs. And we find that our rabbis say, We know this from many sources. This is found in Masichet Sukkah. This is found in Midrash Tehillim. That there will be two Mashiachs for the Jewish people. Mashiach ben Ephraim, or Mashiach ben David. 
There will be one Mashiach from the tribe of Ephraim and then another one from the tribe of David. If this is new to you, then this is, um, this is amazing stuff. Look what he's saying over here. But Tehillah, first will come Mashiach ben Ephraim. First we know the Mashiach of Ephraim will come. Be'yamut, but he will unfortunately die. He will die. And Ahakach Yitgalim Mashiach ben David. And then Mashiach, the son of David, will come. We know that in general, there was always this duo between Yosef and David. Uh, Yosef and Yehuda, right? One of Rachel's kids and one of Leah's kids. So uh, Rachel's child, Yosef, he goes down to Egypt first. And then after he goes down, David come, uh, Yehuda comes down, right? So there's this duo. It's a tag team. Mashiach is uh, Yosef and then David. Yosef will die and then David will live. And that's what the Pasuk is saying. And on that day, we have to take the two birds, i.e. the two Mashiachs. And it has to be, obviously, Mashiach is going to be Hayot. He's going to be Tehorot. Mashiach is not going to be just some strong general that knows how to lead an army. No, Mashiach has to be purely, purely tzaddik, righteous. Ve'omro, and furthermore, besides these two birds, we need its Eres, Ushnitola'at, Ve'ezov. What do the three represent? Who knows three? I know three. Three are the fathers, and two are the Luchot that Moshe brought. One is Hashem. One is Hashem. One is Hashem. In the heaven and the earth. Okay? So who knows three? It is. Sheni tolaat ve'ezov, says the Ora Haim. Remez, this is alluding to the zechut shlosha avot, to the merit of the three patriarchs, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. So in order for the redemption to occur, we're going to need two Mashiachs, and we're going to need the merit of the three fathers. Now, how do you see from these three ingredients, the three fathers? So he explains, it is the cedar tree, that's Abraham. Abraham is, is called by uh, Yeshaya, Yehoshua, Adam Gadol Ba'anakim. Yoshua refers to him as the greatest man among the giants. So Abraham is symbolized by the cedar. The cedar is the greatest and tallest mountain, uh, is the tallest uh, trees amongst other trees. So when we say cedar, we're talking about Abraham Avinu. Okay? Beautiful. Next. Sheni Tolaat. Crimson. The worm. The, to- the crimson thread. That's which, what, which father? There's two left, Yitzchak and Yaakov. That's which one? That's Yaakov. We know the Pasuk itself says in Yeshaya, Al Tiri Tolaat Yaakov. Fear not, O worm of Jacob. So we see that the Yaakov is referred to a uh, Tolaat, uh, a little worm. Why is that? Why is Yaakov referred to as a worm? So he explains over here A worm has no physical strength. And yet he can fell a giant tree through chewing, chewing through it with his mouth. So too the Jewish people. We are much weaker than the nations of the world. I mean, look at our physical strength. Look at our numbers. We, we, have, no sh- we have no shot. We have no chance against the world. But the same way a worm could pull down a tree with his mouth, the Jewish people can win with our mouths, with our prayer. You see, the mouth doesn't only get us into trouble with our gossiping. The mouth also gets us out of trouble with our prayer. Hakol kol Yaakov. The voice is the voice of Yaakov. When Yaakov uses his mouth properly to learn, to pray, our rabbis say, when the voice is the voice of Jacob, then en hayadayim ide isav. Then isav's muscle mean nothing. Okay? So our prayer, our might, is not through our muscles. Our might is through our uh, prayer, our lips, our meditations, our tefillah, our Torah. And this is how we're going to defeat the nations of the world. So the cedar tree represents Avraham, Gadol Ba'anakim. He's the giant amongst, right? He's the of, of giants. The crimson thread, that's the worm, represents Yaakov, who uses his mouth to pray, to learn, right? Hakol kol Yaakov. Yaakov is Ishtam Yoshev Ohalim. That's the Torah. That's the Torah that we learn, my friends. We must realize that right now when you're learning, this learning that you're doing here, we have no idea. This is a very powerful ingredient for the Geulah. This is important. Any learning that you do. And finally, 
Ve'ezov, the hisap. What is that? Hu Yitzchak. That, that's Yitzchak. Why is the hisap Yitzchak? Because Behinat Givura, we know that Yitzchak represents Givura. Yitzchak represents strength. And um, the hisap possesses the ability to banish the forces of evil. The hisap Kabbalistically represents uh, strength. It gets, it gets rid of evil. Uh, we know that on the night of Passover, we had to get rid of the evil. So we dipped hisap, ezov, again into blood. It's very interesting that our Pirashah talks about the big hisap into blood. And also uh, Pesach, we dipped hisap into blood. Right? Very interesting comparison. And uh, we poured it on our door. Right? We, we painted our doors with blood. So the hisap is always front and center whenever we talk about getting rid of bad things. Right? So... That's, that's, you need strength to get rid of things. That's Yitzchak. Yitzchak is Gvura. So you're going to take on the day that the Jewish people are pure, on the day that we cleanse ourselves from gossip, on the day that we stop gossiping, and the Kohen Hashem is going to come out and he's going to see that we're clean. So he's going to go out into the world to wage war, to get rid of our enemies. And we're going to have to take on that day two birds, Two birds are Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David. And along with those two birds, we're also going to need the merit of our forefathers, the merit of Abraham, the cedar tree, the merit of Yitzchak, the, uh, the hyssop, and the merit of Yaakov, the crimson thread. The shahat! Wow! Now what's going to happen on that day? We're going to kill one of the birds. This is obviously which we're alluding. Ramaz laharigat Mashiach ben Ephraim. This means that Mashiach ben Ephraim will be killed in battle. By the word of Hashem, blessed be He. So Hashem will command that the enemy king shall kill Mashiach ben Yosef. And <clears throat> why, will, why, why will that happen, by the way? Why does Hashem want Mashiach ben Yosef to get killed? Why will He not be able to save us? The Pasuk continues and says, you know why? El keli heres al ma'im hayim. You have to slaughter the bird into an earthenware vessel Spr- over spring water. <clears throat> he explains over here, that's alluding. Bishvil kaparat ha'am. Because we need an atonement for the people. A redemption for their soul. So the people are described as a kli heres. When the pasuk says that you slaughter him into an earthenware vessel, it's explaining why is he going to be slaughtered. Mashiach ben Yosef is going to die in battle because of the earthenware vessel. That's us. We are earthenware. Man comes from the ground. Because of our sins, we need a kapara. The tzaddikim's death is a tikkun for our sin. The pasuk says that man was created from the afar. So the klihed is the earthenware vessel is us. The intent. Because the Jews will have been left like an earthenware vessel that is liable to break. Because we're lacking ma'im hayim. We're lacking water. We're lacking uh, Torah in our lives. And therefore, that's why he's going to be killed, Mashiach ben Yosef. <clears throat> he says over here, not only that, This will also light a fire underneath God, so to speak. And he's going to want to get vengeance now for his death. And he's going to use that vengeance to go out to the enemies of, of the Jewish people. And from all of this, look what he says over here. This one I never knew. You ready? From this you learn. From here we know that if the Jews were to learn Torah, if we have the merit of Torah study at the end of time, the righteous Mashiach ben Yosef will not get killed in battle. The Arizal himself writes in his book, that when you pray the Amidah every day, have in mind, pray as well for Mashiach ben Yosef that he should not die. There is a machloket where one should have this kavana. Some say we should have it in the words, Ki li kivinu. We are hoping for your salvation. But some say no, to have it in mind in et kise David mehera betochatachin. Okay? Have it in mind in those words. So to machlok it, which part of the Amidah to meditate to, that Hashem should pray, or that we should pray to Hashem to save the Mashiach ben Yosef. But either way, the Arizal writes that you could pray for this. So it's in our hands actually if Mashiach ben Yosef dies or not. 
Now again, don't ask me who these people are. I have no idea. These are way beyond me. But either way, Ora Haim understands the two birds as representing the two Mashiachs and then the three ingredients as representing the three patriarchs. Et then you're going to take the live bird, the next pasuk. Take the live bird, that's Mashiach ben David. God's going to take him and combine him with the three merit of the patriarchs and along with the blood, that means the anger, the vengeance that God's going to feel from the death the killing of Mashiach ben Yosef. He's going to take all of those together. And then the mercy of Hashem will intensify due to the merit of the patriarchs and due to the Mashiach son of Ephraim who was killed. And all the levels of impurity and all the matters that prevented the attachment of the Jews to Hashem will be atoned. And that's what it means. The next pasuk, al And then you will sprinkle it on the Jewish people seven times. That's, a, that's referring to our atonement. Because of all of these ingredients together, the merit of the patriarchs, and because of the atonement of the Mashiach ben Ephraim, Hashem will provide atonement for the Jewish people. Hashem will provide an atonement for the Jewish people. The Amar Sheva, the number seven we know, is an important number when it comes to getting clean. Seven we find by Nida. He says, uh, we find it already in a few places. A person who touched a dead body. Okay? So that's the... Uh, and then what will happen? The Jewish people will be cleaned. Our clothing will be cleaned. And uh, we will... Uh, we will return to Yerushalayim. So this is really an amazing Ora Hayim. As we again enter the season of redemption. And we are waiting for our personal Mashiach today. We are waiting for Mashiach to come. We need Mashiach now. I think we're all feeling it. And, um, you know, the world's... World War Three is any... You know, it's, it's so delicate. You know, the tiniest thing could... Trigger, 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 trigger. Boom. Mines all over and Iran gets involved and Russia gets involved and China gets involved and everyone gets involved. So we see it. It's right now super, super fragile. It could blow up any second. And we need Mashiach. The world needs Mashiach. My friends, we need the Geulah. And this is the month of Mashiach. We got out of Egypt in this month and we're going to eventually get redeemed in this month. That's what our tradition tells us. And uh, the redemption is in our hands. That comes down to us. On the day that we clean ourselves from Sarat, on the day that we stop speaking gossip, because after all, that's what got the gossiper into trouble. And on the day that that happens, then Hashem will come out and He'll bring the Mashiach. And Bezat Hashem, we will have both Mashiachs alive to celebrate with. And we pray for both. And uh, And on that day, the Savior will go on to the mountain to, uh, to exact vengeance from all the enemies of the Jewish people. But we pray, we pray for peace. We pray for Geulah. We want it. And why do we want it? We want it not to, not to be a world of authority, not to be superior, not so we could eat and drink. We want it so that we could just serve Hashem in peace. Right? That's what we want Mashiach for. We want to just be able to live our lives the way that we were meant to, to be, to serve Hashem the way that we were always meant to serve. Right? So this is in our hands. Right? So Misraim, we went in because of gossip. We went in because of hating and fighting and friction. Even, even before the Jews went down, when Yosef himself went down, the whole story started because of gossip. The whole Mitzrayim began with the gossip of Joseph against his brothers. The whole thing. Now, obviously, um, we don't know who's Mashiach ben Yosef. You know, when someone dies, when somebody dies, that's it. They can no longer come back to life to be Mashiach ben David. You know, it's impossible for someone, once they die, to also be Mashiach ben David. This is the mistake that the Christians made. The Christians claim that uh, Yeshu was Mashiach, and he is Mashiach. And they, they take this maybe Ora Haim over here, and they say, look, you see, it says he's in atonement. But that's, that's, uh, that can't be Mashiach ben David. He can't be the Mashiach ben David if he's going to, uh, if he's going to die. Mashiach ben David's going to live. Right? Mashiach ben David's going to live. So uh, it can't be that someone that died is Mashiach ben David. Uh, now, 
<clears throat> that's a complicated question. I, I cannot answer that. You know, could the Lubavitcher Rebbe have been Mashiach ben Yosef? I, nobody knows the answer to these questions, right? Nobody knows the answer to these questions. Um, but, uh, but either way, either way, we, uh, we pray for Mashiach. Uh, speedily in our times. Amen. Uh, we'll see everyone tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.